Hey guys, for this week's video, I want to talk about leadership. And specifically around leadership, I want to ask the question, what is the most important thing that a leader must do, foundational? If he or she doesn't do this thing, then everything at some point will fall apart. And I'm going to submit to you that the most important thing a leader can do is love. And the mindset I believe a leader has to have to do that well is this. I will never be more than the love I give in this moment to the person right in front of me. If a leader wants to lead one person, five people, 10 people, or thousands of people, and ever moves to the point and Many of us do this, and I know I have most of my life, where the thinking is, you're useful to me. I'm glad you're on the team. I hope you do well, and I'd like to help you. But my number one thought is, where are we going? How can I grow this organization? And ultimately, how do I keep my job and what's in it for me? Am I doing a great job? All the different moving parts, am I holding them together well? If we think that way, as counterintuitive as it is, as much as it seems like shouldn't we be thinking about the entire organization, how we can hold it together, and frankly, at the end of the day, how we do well at our jobs, I'm submitting to you that if that's the way we think, it will infect the way that we speak and act, and ultimately, things will likely fall apart. Why? Because thinking that way ultimately at some point sows into the community a spirit, a sickness, a tainting of selfishness. It becomes selfish at some point and everybody takes on what the leader models. Instead, what the leader wants to think at all times is, I am never greater, and our organization that I lead is never better than how well I love, in this moment, the person right in front of me, no matter who they are. Let's go to the Bible. The first thing I want to look at is Matthew chapter 25. Jesus just says this beautiful, amazing speech from verse 31 to the end of the chapter. And the core of it is verse 40. And he says, I tell you the truth. When you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. And earlier he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me into your home. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you cared for me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And they ask him, Lord, when did we, you were never naked. You were never in prison. When did we do this? And he said, when you do it for anyone, you're doing it for me. Listen, God created us in his image. God's greatest joy his, is truly only joy is to love. That's who he is. So every day, all the time, he's pouring out love. And what he's especially passionate about is people in the world who don't feel loved. People in the world who are broken and hurting and what he calls the least of these. And he says, hey, especially when you stop thinking about the big stuff or the bottom line or where you're taking the whole organization or where you want to end up or protecting your role and your job and your security and your safety, but you just, with all that you are, like not leaving anything out, but every ounce of you, you're pouring love in this moment into whoever's right in front of you, that's when you are everything, the most that I ever created you to be. Lastly, I want to go to Acts chapter 6. 
The church has been formed. It's growing rapidly. In fact, in verse 1, it says, as they grew rapidly, there were rumblings of discontent. And it was the 12 apostles, Jesus' 12 disciples, who were leading the church. And people were not getting taken care of. Greek-speaking believers complained that the Hebrew-speaking believers, uh, widows, were getting more or, or something was out of whack in terms of the daily distribution of food. The Greek-speaking believers were saying, our widows are not getting their right allotment in terms of the food in this community. Listen, that, that's a measurable thing. That's something that the 12 apostles, disciples, should have known about. Here's what I'm saying. that This wasn't just a complaint like, we don't like this theology, let's debate it. It wasn't just, hey, they said something not nice to me. This was very exactly the Hebrew-speaking widows being treated measurably better than these other widows. My guess is the apostles' disciples knew about it. If they didn't know about it, they should have known about it. And here's the point. The apostles, to some degree, though we don't know all the context and, and details, were not fully living in such a way that they said, it's all about the least of these. It's all about this moment, right now, whoever's right in front of me, how do I love them well? The church was growing rapidly. They were, I mean, these were humans. These were people. They, they had faults, okay? That they're not infallible. So, so their, their mind's getting blown and they're going, whoa, we're getting blessed. We got to go out and preach more and preach more. And that's what they say later. They said, listen, we've got to find some good people to handle this food distribution for us because we need to keep preaching. And they were probably right in that. But it shows that they were thinking, we've got to be out there preaching. We've got to take advantage of this. So who knows how long this will last? But you know what? The widows would not have been looked over. They would not have been um, left out or treated incorrectly if the apostles' number one thing always had been, I am never better than the love I give in this moment to whoever's right in front of me. Instead, they were thinking, Whoo, we've got to keep growing this thing. Where are we going to take this thing? How big can this thing be? Is the blessing ever going to stop because we're loving the blessing? Let's move in this. Let's charge forward. And wait a second, are we leaving somebody behind? Didn't even think it. They responded well. They took care of it. They pushed pause and they said, we've got to take care of this. We've got to do this right. Because guess what? If we don't love one, we're not loving any. And that's where I want to end. The challenge is leaders. The challenge is humans. The challenge is people. The challenge is parents. The challenge is friends, sons and daughters, all of it, is if we won't love one, then we truly won't love any. If we leave one out, we're leaving all out. If we look down on one, we're looking down on all. If we pass over, if we don't pay attention to, if we don't pour all that we are in the moment into the one that's right in front of us, then we're not giving any of ourselves away to anybody or anything. We're just holding on. If we don't love the least of these, we're not loving him. And he said, if you want to love well, if you want to lead well, Love the one, and you'll bless the many.